Calling Doom fast is the biggest understatement of the year. Heck, it's actually insanely fast. You'll be moving and shooting a lot, and the game does an overwhelmingly amazing job at throwing bucket load of enemies on the screen for you to take them out in the most gruesomely awesome way possible. The on-screen action and gameplay is ridiculously fast, and this is exactly what players expect from Doom, and boy have an id software developed a completely orthodox shooter, something which is reminiscent of the older days. Make no mistake, if you're looking for a contemporary shooter, you won't find it in Doom. The game is completely orthodox and almost unusual in terms of level design and gameplay mechanics. Let's begin with a single player campaign. In an age where campaigns and first person shooters last around 5 to 7 hours, Doom features a surprisingly long campaign. You'll easily invest around 12 hours in the campaign, which is double than what most first person shooter games offer. At times you'll feel that you're retreading or doing the same thing over and over again, but the game counters this by introducing a new enemy type or simply throws hordes and hordes of enemies to keep you on your feet. There's never a dull moment in Doom, and this is all down to the immaculate pacing the game offers. Running on id Tech 6, the game looks amazing from a technical standpoint. The game utilizes heavy post-processing effects such as cinematic motion blur, tons of explosions, and runs at an almost locked 60 frames per second, although I did encounter some minor drops on the PS4 version, especially when there were a ton of enemies on the screen. The maps in the single player campaign are wide and expansive, and the game generally encourages you to explore your surroundings, but at the same time throws enough enemies from time to time so that you don't lose your focus from the action. Unfortunately, bigger levels mean increased load times, and Doom has one for each level. The load times can be a pain since they range anywhere from 30 to 50 seconds, and to be honest, they can kill off the pacing and tension at times. It just feels odd that the game does a fantastic job of creating that tension at the end of the level, and literally kills it by introducing long and lazy loading screens. As I've already mentioned before, Doom features an orthodox game design, and this is also reflected in the enemies. There are tons of enemies to be found in Doom whether it's the simple and easy possessed humans, or the annoying cacodemons, or whether it is the intimidating cyberdemon to the disturbingly gross ditto, Doom delivers one of the most compelling groups of enemies that you will ever fight in a first person shooter. And it doesn't end there. They aren't that different in name, but they also vary in terms of behavior and characteristics. Some enemies like the ones who are possessed are incredibly slow and are easy to take down, whereas the revenants are agile and hostile. All of them are intricately animated, and some of them may even use the environment to take you down. There are also quite a few bosses in the game without giving too much away, let me tell you that they are not in any way pushovers. They will absolutely push you to your limits, and there is one boss in particular that gave me a rather hard time. The key to winning these encounters is to consistently upgrade your armor and weapons, and this is yet another area where the new Doom truly shines. Doom provides the player with an arsenal of weapons, some new and some old. You'll have access to some oldies such as the BFG 9000, if you're a newcomer then you should know that this is one of the most iconic weapons in the series, the super shotgun, heavy assault rifle, plasma gun, backed up by several throwable weapons such as frag and siphon grenades. My personal favorite was the chainsaw, and it was the perfect weapon to rip and shred the demons into tiny little pieces. The good thing about this weapon is it increases ammo drops, but the downside is that it uses fuel canisters, so if you run out of them, you won't be able to use this little baby unless you find more fuel. The game also features a customization system wherein the player can mod the weapons. So for example, your shotgun can double up as a launcher and so on. These mods are unlocked by ability points which you'll earn during normal playthrough of the game. The weapons feel tight and the shooting largely feels satisfying, but their sound effects were a bit underwhelming such as the plasma gun for example. Besides the underwhelming weapon sounds, I wasn't a particularly big fan of the plot in the game. The game is touted as a reboot, and to be honest, the story did not suck me in. It's perhaps due to the way the story is told, but this also means that the new Doom is highly accessible to newcomers. You don't need to know anything about the series past, you can jump right into the action. Overall, the single player is a huge part of the entire Doom package, which is unusual for a shooter releasing in a contemporary era. But then again, Doom is not a contemporary shooter, so it's great to see the campaign was a priority for id Software. If the single player was anything to go by, you can expect even more chaotic proceedings in the multiplayer component. Note that id Software teamed up with a certain affinity to develop the multiplayer portion, and for the most part, it's a ton of fun. This is also where we see Doom leaving some of its orthodox gameplay mechanics to adapt itself to the modern style of customization and progression which will allow you to customize your weapons and armor to the T. There are a number of modes such as Clan Arena, Domination, and Warpath which can take place across a number of maps such as Excavation, Helix, and Beneath. Much like the single player component, the map design is not contemporary, so it may get a bit confusing if you decide to jump directly into it without playing the single player campaign. The game's progression system places its emphasis on playing more rather than winning. Essentially, as you play more, you'll be able to unlock new equipments, armor, and weapons. The developers also added hack modules which give the player a slight advantage such as the alarm module which will activate an audio cue which will play when an enemy is nearby, and the infinite ammo module will give the player infinite ammo for a short amount of time. The game gives two hack modules whenever you complete a match, and each of the modules has three different tiers. I found this system integral in changing the momentum of a match whenever I found myself or my team in a difficult position. The game also comes packed in with a level editor. Dubbed as Snap Map, it's a set of editing tools which allows the player to develop their own levels. 
provides a rather in-depth set of options, and it will be interesting to see what the community does with it. You can bet that we will see some of the classic Doom levels redeveloped using SnapMap in the future. To close it off, Doom is by far the best first-person shooter you'll play this generation. It's not something you'll expect, just go in without any unusual expectations, and you'll be pleasantly surprised by the depth the game offers. And did we mention that the game allows you to play classic levels from the older Doom games? Now we're talking! And that wraps it up. What are your thoughts about this? Let us know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, please like and share it on Twitter and Facebook. And why not consider subscribing? We upload some really cool videos almost every day. Thank you for watching this video and happy gaming!